Good evening and welcome to Tinkering with Edkelar. Tonight I have another workshop video for you. Sorry for the long break. I was busy renovating part of my workshop, including my stage here. As you may have noticed, I occasionally like to use spray cans to paint items. To use these, I always needed to go outside and never had enough good light around to see, much less film, what I'm painting. In short, I needed a spray booth. After some quick sketching, some slight refining and a bit of simple math, I had an idea of how much lumber and plywood to get. Cutting it to size was quickly done, as I decided to just use regular screws to hold it together. Eventually I will get around to doing some joinery. I promise. The holes in the vertical support are offset, so the screws don't pass through each other. Since the working surface sits within the support beams, it needed some cutouts. I used some 90 degree clamps to make sure my drilled holes connect everything perpendicular. I countersunk the holes for some standard wood screws. After I made sure that the two side structures were ok, I clamped the work surface to them, allowing the connecting beams to be put into place as precisely as possible. The top end got its own support beams, both to affix the panels later and for added stability. Time for the most important test. Can it hold my cup of coffee? Yes! Already worth the effort. The side panels are made of thinner plywood they are not load-bearing, but still add to the overall rigidity. The back panel turned out slightly too short. Well, maybe my back-of-the-envelope calculations were done on an imperial envelope, when I'm a metric cat. Or I just goofed. Funny enough, the cutoffs from the panel material added up to exactly what was missing. Two rails across the top of the booth will become a good way to hang items for painting. It got late and when mounting the top panel, my camera seemed to doze off. Since I wanted integrated fume venting and lights, I decided to put in an electric panel on one side. The box should be at least semi-airtight to aid ventilation, so I used some caulk to seal it. I selected some LED strips for lights, but the brand has some proprietary connectors and power supplies. 
Turns out the special power supply is just a regular LED driver and the connectors are just 5 pins with some of them common together to carry the supply voltage. I replaced the custom stuff with regular wires, cut the LED strips to length and measured the current, just to make sure that my wires are capable of handling um, about 130 milliamps, so yes. To mount the LEDs, I selected a 45 degree wooden rail. But how hot are these LEDs going to be? To make sure nothing would catch fire or start smoking, I mounted aluminium strips to the rails, offset by washers and glued the LEDs to those. Improvised heatsink. For power distribution I picked a nice project box and some switches. Cutting the box was interesting. The plastic melted and fused together again behind the blade of my scroll saw. Cut, curse, repeat. I used zip ties to add strain relief to the cables and after some preparation, the wires were ready for braiding. Let there be light! The fume extraction was up next. I procured a radial fan because of air volume capability. Also, these usually have external motors or at least brushless ones. Remember, the fumes are most likely flammable. After cutting a decent sized hole in the top panel, I glued a piece of pipe to it to make sure the fan has a level surface to sit on. I decided to put a bit of rubber between the fan and the pipe to dampen vibrations and to keep the noise low. The workshop room has an old disused oven pipe that leads to a disused chimney, perfect for getting out fumes. To connect the fan to the old chimney, I used plenty of caulk and sealing tape. Usually spray booths are equipped with filters. Neat idea, but expensive. Since I don't have access to commercial grade paint anyhow and consumer stuff is meant to be used in well ventilated areas, I can replace the filter with something similar just to break up the airflow and make sure that not only the very top edge is sucking in air. I found a nice outdoor tablecloth to fit the bill. The holder for it is made of wood beams with plastic tubing. Light and sturdy enough. I sandwiched the filter between two such frames and put in latches to hold the outer one in place. Testing <laughs> works. And now for a quick bonus round. I couldn't resist and give that thing a try. Impromptu restoration. Meet my very own rubber ducky. I got this as a present from an unknown relative when I was a little kitten and it still squeaks. Just the color faded quite a bit. No wonder after over 40 years? 
gosh, I'm old. So, out with the airbrush colors and let's give Tucky a new paint job. I do quite like the result, even though my mom later told me that the duck was mostly white to begin with. Oops, oh well. This concludes another episode of Tinkering with Edkelar. I hope you enjoyed it, see you next time!